Hey, welcome everyone. Have a seat, please. Good afternoon and thank you for joining us today for the annual Central Ohio Senior Citizens Hall of Fame. It's great to see smiling faces on this afternoon. I'm Cindy Farson. I'm director of the Central Ohio Area Agency on Aging. And our organization provides information, caregiving assistance, service grants, education, and case management for older adults in Central Ohio in all of our eight counties. And we work with over 6,000 people to arrange service packages so they can stay comfortably at home and involved with family and friends. And we work with and fund local organizations to provide critical services like home meals, transportation, and personal care. We love that work and we hear so many wonderful life stories throughout the year, but none more inspiring than the folks that you'll meet today. May is Older Americans Month, and this is the 39th time that we've celebrated the month by honoring older Americans that have contributed their talents and their hard work to make Central Ohio a better place to live. I wonder if any of you saw the 60 Minutes a few weeks ago uh, when they interviewed people in their 90s and above about their habits that lead to a long life. In clinical studies, these folks found that a little drink once a day, maybe even two, being a little overweight, blood pressure a little higher than the standard and 45 minutes of exercise, no more than that, um, were common among the most independent 90-year-old crowd. So that was very encouraging to me and I know that we probably should be serving wine at the reception. <laughs> but those studies change. You know, every year they, got a new, they have a new formula for long, happy lives. Um, uh, but uh, I think that the group that we have here today could give us the advice that we should all take, and that is to stay active and keep contributing because that's what they've done and it certainly has served them all well. So here we have the 2014 inductees ready to honor, and I'd also like to acknowledge past inductees who are here with us today. Could our past honorees stand up, please, and be recognized? <laughs> Great to see all of you and know that you're still using the formula, staying active and, and coming to events. Um, I want to welcome our many public officials here to, today to honor our inductees. Our county commissioners are here and you'll meet them a little later. They play such an important role in local services. They fund services, they support senior levies, they send representatives to our advisory council and they take a real personal interest in so many aging issues and it's a great pleasure to have them participate in the ceremony. We're also happy to welcome city officials and representatives from our congressional and senate offices. It means a great deal that you took the time to be with us here today. And of course, we want to welcome the family and friends that are here today to honor uh, our inductees. You really are the people that make this a happy day for our inductees, and, and we welcome you. Um, and now I would like to introduce Bob Horrocks, who is chairman of our regional advisory council. Uh, our council is made up of representatives from each of our eight counties. I've worked with Bob in various parts of the state and in different capacities for over 30 years. He's been a tremendous advocate for older adults and has led aging program development in Delaware County to great success. And we're delighted to have his, his experience and participation on our council. Please welcome Bob. Thank you, Cindy. I'll try this again. It is uh, certainly my pleasure to welcome you on behalf of the Central Ohio uh, Area Agency on Aging Advisory Council. Uh, if you've never been to this event before, um, uh, strap your seat belts on. You're going to meet some amazing people. Uh, another group of wonderful people are the folks I serve with on our advisory council. Uh, these folks do represent uh, all eight counties in the region. Uh, we come together on a monthly basis. Um, we uh, share what's going on in our counties and we learn from each other. Uh, we often hear presentations from uh, local, state, or national leaders on, on aging issues. Occasionally we get to vote on, on things. Um, we do have a, a special events committee of the advisory council and they've been uh, uh, integrally involved in helping shape this event uh, over the years and helping make sure that uh, it's the best event that it can be. And also members of the advisory council are involved in uh, helping to select the inductees uh, for this Hall of Fame. 
So it's a, a, a wonderful group of people. And uh, if you're in the audience as an advisory council member, I'd please uh, welcome you to stand and, and uh, be recognized. Thank you so much for your, uh, for your ongoing service. Um, I also have the honor of um, uh, introducing the Director of uh, Recreation and Parks for the City of Columbus, Mr. Alan McKnight. And some of you may wonder, well, what's, what's a guy in uh, recreation got to do with a Senior Citizen Hall of Fame? Um, so let me give you a little bit of perspective. Ohio has 12 regions. There are 12 area agencies on aging. Um, in central Ohio, uh, we're somewhat unique because most area agencies are nonprofit organizations. And in uh, central Ohio, the area agency on aging is housed within the city of Columbus. And within the city of Columbus, it's uh, housed in the uh, Recreation and Parks Department. And uh, um, I was, I was uh, uh, um, thinking last night, because I'm going to get to introduce uh, Mr. McKnight, and, and Alan is Cindy's boss. And, uh, and so I was walking, uh, uh, trying to get my 45 minutes of exercise in, and, uh, uh, and I get an email from Cindy last night. It was about 8.30, and uh, she's probably still in her office working, and and checking in whether I'm coming today. And, uh, and so I took the opportunity to, to uh, text her back and said, hey, do you know any really embarrassing stories about your boss <laughs> that I could, I could tell you tomorrow? And, and uh, you know, I was really disappointed because all she could do was talk about what a great guy uh, Alan is and, and uh, what a pleasure to work for. And, uh, and she shared with me that uh, Alan has been uh, uh, playing, uh, played a leadership role in the Department of Recreation and Parks for 40 years now. And uh, last year, 2013, he was uh, voted among his peers with the Ohio Association of uh, Recreation and Parks Departments as uh, uh, the 2013 Professional of the Year, which uh, was a real honor. We are, uh, we are very much um, um, uh, appreciate his service here in the community, uh, uh, not only for seniors, but for the entire community that, that takes part in, in the parks and recreational facilities here in Columbus. Please help me welcome Mr. Alan McKnight. Thank you, Bob. And don't let, uh, let her kid you. Uh, Cindy runs a great operation, and uh, I'm not sure how much supervision I really provide here. Uh, the COAAA is a great organization, provides great services to the uh, Central Ohio community, and uh, is one of the best-run uh, organizations in the city of Columbus. And we're proud to have Cindy and the whole COAAA organization as part of the city of Columbus. Uh, good afternoon, and, and welcome to the Martin Janus Center. Uh, hopefully this isn't the first time you've been here. If it is, I hope you come back again. This is a great uh, center that we operate. Uh, one of 29 centers that we operate around the city. The city. This one's focused on programming for seniors, uh, programs from uh, lapidary, woodworking, music, dance. We've got a great model railroad club here. Uh, great facility, great programs, and you know this auditorium. We use it for a lot of events. So, again, if you're not a member here or have not been here, we'd encourage you to come back and enjoy the facility uh, and participate in many of the programs. I would like to. Uh, just give a shout out real quick to Doreen Gaucher. Doreen is the manager here. She and her staff do, do a great job. This past week, we've had the Creative Arts event uh, in the facility. If you got here early, hopefully you had a chance to walk around and look at some of the artwork that's been generated from uh, seniors all over Central Ohio. There's some great, uh, great art out there. Last week, uh, Wednesday evening, actually, we gave awards out to many of the uh, participants who are displaying the art here this week. So it's a great facility. Please come back and enjoy it. I do also want to just thank Cindy Farson and her staff. They've uh, 
done this job. I think this is the seventh year now I've participated in this event, and uh, they've done a great job of putting this program together as well. She and her staff work hard every year to pull it off and to put it together so that we can recognize folks that um, uh, deserve to be recognized that give so much to their community. The Recreation and Parks Department, the mission of our department is to enrich the lives of our citizens. We're only able to do that because of many of the volunteer hours and many of the folks that come out day in and day out and support our programs and support our activities. Last year, we estimated that we had almost 125,000 volunteer hours given to our department. That works out to about two and a half million dollars or the equivalent of about 60 full-time staff. That's a heck of an impact and, and really allows us to do the programming and provide the services we do, not only to seniors, but the youth and adults throughout the community. And so uh, I think that's a pretty amazing number, and we really couldn't do what we do without that support. Today we're here to recognize 15 individuals who've given so much of their time and energy back to the community. Those being recognized today have volunteered in a whole range of activities, provided meals on wheels, services in senior centers, guardianship, uh, just a whole host of activities, and they've not just come out and done it occasionally. I think in reading the bios, one couple had donated over 10,000 hours of time. And you think, of, you think about that, that's equivalent to five years of full-time work without a vacation. I mean, that's pretty amazing that people, uh, you folks, are willing to give that much time back to the community. So with your efforts, you're living up to our mission, which is to enrich the lives of our citizens. You're making a difference in this community. I want to thank all of you. You're to be congratulated. And you've just done a tremendous job, and we really appreciate all that you do. And this recognition is, is well-deserved, so thank you for what you do. Um, now it's my pleasure to introduce Councilman Herschel Craig. Again, as part of the City of Columbus, uh, within City Council, we have committees. Councilman Craig now chairs the Recreation and Parks Committee on City Council. Uh, but he's been around, this is the first year he's uh, chaired that committee, but he's been around co uh, council for a number of years and been around Columbus for many years uh, serving this community in one capacity or another. And he really understands the value of the services that Recreation and Parks provide, that COAAA provide uh, to all of our citizens and especially our seniors. And I want to welcome Councilman Craig to the stage. Councilman Craig. <laughs> Dr. Benjamin Elijah Mays, the mentor to Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., uh, at 92 years old, served on the school board in Atlanta, Georgia. He said this, there ought to be something in a person's life greater than their vocation, more grand than their material possessions or wealth, higher than genius, more enduring than fame. Here lies your greatest challenge and most compelling duty, whoever uplifts. Civilization is rich, though they die penniless. Future generations will erect their monument. Let me uh, certainly, if you will do me a great favor by honoring Cindy this morning with a hand clap this morning and all of the work that she is doing. <laughs> certainly to our uh, illustrious uh, director and certainly to the, the chair of this great organization and board, would you also honor them this morning? What really today is your day. I looked through the bios of, of all of the recipients. All of you contribute so much to the life and fabric of our state and our nation. And I say that without hyperbole. Uh, we so honor you today. Uh, I, I, I will be 65 in, a, in about a, a month. And I got my AARP card. I got my Buckeye card, and I'm letting everybody know, but we so honor your work and your contributions to families and children, and I simply say, God bless you. We honor you today, and have a great day today. Thank you, Councilman Craig, for being here today and your ongoing interest in aging issues. And now we are going to present our annual Outstanding Service to Seniors Award. And I ask the representatives from the Circle of Caring to come on up here. Let's see, here we are. <laughs> okay. Um, let's
Let's see. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about this award. It was created to spotlight one organization's effort to make Central Ohio a better place for older adults and to inspire all the others to do the same. It really is wonderful how organizations work towards helping others in their community. And uh, we are saluting the Circle of Caring Faith in Action Group this year for that award. They make daily impacts in the lives of frail older adults and people with disabilities who live in Pickaway County. This group usually is doing the nominating of Hall of Fame um, uh, awardees. They have done a great job of putting forth names to us for volunteers in their organization, and we figured it was just about time to recognize all the work that they do. So we have Martha Bullard here today, uh, coordinator of Circle of Caring. Uh, she, uh, I think one of your board members was, is here today too, aren't they? We have. You have several of our volunteers several of your boards here and, and members and volunteers. Here. Okay. Um, the Circle of Caring was founded in 1997. Uh, during 2013, their volunteers contributed two, uh, 2,672 volunteer hours, assisting 191 residents of Pickaway County with needs like transportation, handyman chores, yard work, shopping, running errands, light housekeeping, friendly visiting, and ramp building. And in fact, 22 ramps last year, and I'm yes. tired thinking about all the things that you're doing <laughs> for folks. The services are coordinated by Burger Health Systems with support from local churches in the community. And I want to congratulate Martha, and thank you for all that you do to make, and your organization does, to make uh, life better for people in Pickaway County. So, congratulations. And we'd like to have you say, Absolutely. You say a few words and have them do that. Thank you so much, Cindy. And I would like for the volunteers that are with us today from Circle of Caring to please stand. And I know one of our very special volunteers is Alice Harker, who will be inducted later for representing Pickaway County. Thank you. Were it not for them, I wouldn't be here accepting this in their behalf. They truly are dedicated, dependable volunteers, and they actually get places on time, unlike their coordinators sometimes. <laughs> so anyway, it is a great honor for us to uh, receive this award, and please come down and visit us. Even if it's not pumpkin show time, we're there at 1280 North Court. Thank you. Thank you. You're pick away proud, aren't you? That's what one of the commissioners used to always say when she came up here. <laughs> so now, we, it is my great honor to introduce Colleen Marshall. She's here now to take over the show. She is one busy lady, but very generous with her time when it comes to regional organizations. And it is a pleasure to introduce her as our master ceremony today. Colleen Marshall is well known as an Emmy Award winning, winning journalist and co-anchor at NBC4. She won an Emmy for the health program, I Want to Go Home, A Journey Through Alzheimer's, and she was nominated for an Emmy, Emmy, <laughs> Emmy <laughs> for the political program, NBC4's The Spectrum, both in 2013. She's also a practicing attorney at Porter Wright, Morris, and Arthur, and so you can imagine how thrilled we are to have her here for the Hall of Fame. She's an advocate for many issues, especially Alzheimer's disease, which touches so many of our clients and families. Please help me welcome Colleen Marshall. Good afternoon, everyone, and um, I want to commend the councilman for standing up here and telling everybody how old he is. <laughs> there was a time when I refused to do that. Some of you may know Gail Hogan, my uh, former co-anchor and still a, a colleague at NBC4. She and I were born on the same day, same day, same year. And when we turned 40, she announced that to everyone on the air. And I remember saying to her, are you on crack? Don't tell people. <laughs> Don't tell people we're 40. Well, then when we hit 50, I announced it on the air because I figured it's too late now. She's already told everyone. But I'm not sure if I, when, I, when I hit 60 if I'll be sharing that with everyone. But welcome. And I really do get to do the best part of this day because I get to introduce the people who have such fabulous stories of service and commitment and dedication to the people of Central Ohio. Uh, and the way this works, we're going to have um, our inductees will be escorted to the stage um, by the representative from their county, 
which is usually the county commissioner, and we're going to have them come forward. We'll have the commissioner or whoever the representative is share a little bit of information. But while they're coming up, I will give you a little bit of background on our inductees so that you all understand why they are such special people and why we are entering them into a Hall of Fame. Up first, we're going to begin with Marvin and Shirley Philpott of Delaware County being escorted today by County Commissioner Gary Merrill. Now, Marvin and Shirley were nominated by the Council for, Council for Older Adults, and we want Bob Horrocks of the Council for Older Adults to come to the stage as well because Bob is going to be presenting a package to Marvin and Shirley as I read a note that is attached to it. This is a surprise for them. It says, Dear Marvin and Shirley, for as long as I've known you, you both have had attitudes of service, from the Lions Club to the countless hours spent with REACT and amateur radio groups, the Boy Scouts, cheerleading, field trips, concession stands, the homeless, and various churches that you've belonged to. You have given of yourselves freely and without any expectation of thanks or appreciation. You have truly been great examples to your children, your grandchildren, and I'm sure countless others. I can think of no two people more deserving of this honor. As much as I would love to be there, the timing is such that it was not possible, but I didn't want this gift to just appear in the mail. So thank you, Bonnie and the COAAA for presenting this to you on my behalf. Congratulations and I love you. Signed, Shanna. And Commissioner Merrill has some remarks for us today. Commissioner? I'm very pleased to be here today. What, a, what special people. And I hope all of you take time to read those 12 bios. They're really unique people. They're great people doing good works in our, our state and our counties, and that's fantastic. I uh, have a privilege of knowing these two people, and in session uh, a couple weeks ago, we put together a proclamation, and I think I'm going to read one paragraph from that proclamation that pretty well says it all. Whereas together, Marvin and Shirley have volunteered more than 7,600 hours with the Meals on Wheels program at the Council of Older Adults, and another 3,200 plus hours at Grady Memorial Hospital. And I think that pretty well says it all, and Mr. McKnight did the math for you. And that represents five years if you take 40 hours a week. That is a lot of time devoted to the people in Delaware County. I believe they joined our county in 1991, is that correct? And how fortuitous we were that they chose our county to move to and all the good things they had because of that. Thank you very much. I first started out by wanting to volunteer when my parents needed help so badly. And I really, really appreciate the opportunity of being able to do that through the Council of Older Adults as well as Grady Memorial Hospital. Our daughter says we are supposed to open this. It says, 2014 Central Ohio Agency Citizens Hall of Fame honorees. She made this herself. <laughs> our gift to ourselves is the pleasure we receive in serving our clients. We try to make them smile and laugh. And in doing so, it makes us recognize that we may have enriched their day. Some days, we are the only people our clients see. Last year, when we were asked to be nominated, we did not know what was going to be entailing in, in this process. As time went on, we forgot about it. 
<laughs> until we received a phone call saying we were going to be inductees this year. I want to thank the Delaware County Council for Older Adults for the nomination. I want to thank the Central Ohio Area Agency on Aging for the selection. I want to thank the Delaware County Commissioners for their prestigious proclamation. That proclamation created one big whirlwind of activities. <clears throat> now, as looking around the audience, I see many of our friends here. Friends that we volunteer with and work with at the Council for Older Adults. Friends that we work with and volunteer with at Grady Memorial Hospital in Delaware. I even see from the time we retired 11 and 12 years ago, friends that we worked with while we were employed. I want to thank all of these people for being here for us. <laughs> they are showing quite an honor. There are many others in this audience I know that are here as friends of other inductees. I want to thank all of you for being here and sharing this experience. Thank you. Congratulations to both of you. Up next, we're going to have Will and Ruth Beckwith of Fairfield County, escorted by County Commissioner David Levesey. Will and Ruth were nominated by Gail McCreary. Under the Beckwith's leadership, the Baltimore Food Pantry has become a well-established all-volunteer operation with all food items donated. They inspire a community-wide effort supported by area churches collecting food items and special offerings. The local schools hold contests between grades or classes to see who can bring in the most items. The football team asks for food donations from spectators at scrimmages, and one day a year, the mail carriers pick up donated food items. Items. Capitalizing on donated food from grocery stores and restaurants, the Beckwiths have a model for extending food resources while preventing needless waste. Commissioner Levesey will talk more about the Beckwiths. It's, uh, it's really too bad that Councilman Craig left because when I uh, first received my AARP card, I wrote on it, refused, and returned to sender. <laughs> I, I have a good friend who every time I meet him, he and I are about the same age. Matter of fact, I'm a little older than Councilman Craig. Uh, he always says, it's, how are you? And he always says, well, it's better to be seen than viewed. So <laughs> I, think, I think that's a good, uh, good way to put things. But uh, understanding volunteerism, I've worked as a, uh, as a firefighter, fire chief, and um, paramedic as a volunteer for 20 years and I, I really saw the importance of volunteering your time and serving others and this is exemplified by uh, Ruth and Will and, and their willingness to uh, serve those who have special needs and that's the need of food, one of the basic things that each of us uh, require every day and, and they do it in a special way, they do it with no government help and it's much more effective because you don't have all that red tape to deal with and, and sometimes that red tape gets in the way of doing a better job, if you will. So with that, I, I congratulate, and by the way, the food pantry is only a small portion of what the, they do and I'm quite familiar with that. E even our church, which I attend in the same town, uh, we try to contribute and help, but I'm very familiar with the work they do and how effective they are and we, I'd like to congratulate Will and Ruth today on, on, on uh, receiving this award. Thank you all for coming and I just want to say thank you. Thank you to Gail and Debbie for nominating us. Thank you for, to the committee for choosing us and thank you all for all your support for the community in Baltimore, for the churches, the schools, um, everybody that donates to us. And by the way, the letter carriers collected, we think, about 1,200 food items last Saturday for us uh, that still have to be put away, so come on down. 
Uh, but we really enjoy what we do. Um, I hope, uh, a reporter asked me, what, what do you get out of it? And, and after thinking about it, what we get out of it is the satisfaction of knowing that grandma doesn't have to quit taking her medicine so she can buy food, and that the children can have fresh produce, uh, which I'll guarantee you, if you don't have money, you don't go buy the fresh produce part department in the grocery store because it's too expensive. But we thank you all for the honor. Uh, to all of you who are here, our family and friends, we really appreciate you coming, and it is a great honor. Thank you. And I can't talk off the top of my head. I need to have some direction. I'd like to thank all of our volunteers, those who have volunteered in the past, those who are volunteering now, and the ones in the future. For some reason, some of them have to leave or for any direction. But whether they're drivers who pick up, drivers who deliver for us, uh, we take all of our extra food down to food pantries in Lancaster, and a soup kitchen every, every week, twice a week we go. Uh, I'd like to thank them all. Uh, we pack our food orders, we distribute them, they, uh, they just help us so much. We really appreciate their de dedication. Without you, we would be lost. Thank you. Thank you, Bill, and congratulations. Up next is Dorothy Up of Fairfield County, escorted by County Commissioner Mike Kiger. Dorothy was nominated by her son, Commissioner Kiger, for her care and commitment to her family, her friends, her church, her community, and her country. Throughout her life, Dorothy has been known for her strong work ethic and dedication. From 1983 to 2010, she routinely worked 16 to 18 hours per shift at the polls. From 1995 to 2005, she gave four hours every Thursday to Fairfield Christian Church to help with cleaning. She also cooked at the summer youth church camp for three weeks every year and for weekend retreats as well. Dorothy also drove a bus for the Lancaster School District years ago. So congratulations to Dorothy Up. It's certainly my honor and privilege to be able to call this woman my mother. She brought me into this world three, 63 years ago. I'm not afraid to tell my age, Colleen. <laughs> Just to let you know that. But um, ever since she's been around, it was always when I was growing up, it was Dorothy's son. Dorothy's son did this, Dorothy's son did that. She took that in great stride. As I got older and she got older, all of a sudden it was, that's Mike's mom. No matter where she went, everybody always referred to, that's Mike's mom. So it's, it's just been a, a, a ever-ending circle that keeps going around. So now today, it's Dorothy's son. This is my mother. She's done a lot of volunteering. She supported four brothers during World War II, one of which was in a Normandy invasion as a glider pilot. She has supported the churches in the area by doing uh, kitchen duty for the youth during the summer. And uh, she still continues to this day, even though she broke her hip in 2012 and had a heart episode in February of 2014, she still volunteers at Olivedale and goes out there every Monday, gets the Boltons out, and volunteers every Wednesday for Granny's Attic where they auction things off. So with that being said, I'd like to introduce my mother, Dorothy Up. Well, we have to take everything that he said was a grain of salt. <laughs> Part of it is true. And I'm thankful for this honor. It is a great honor. And I just want to tell you a little something about my Sunday school class. Um, somebody, they made a list. Somebody comes and gets me every Sunday morning. And then my son picks me up, comes over to church and picks me up later. And we go to breakfast. And, but one thing I have learned, uh, our class supported a girl through the school. I hardly knew her, but after she graduated, she came to me and said, you have been a great inspiration to me. So we must always remember, we may be the only Bible that somebody reads. Thank you.
Up next, we have Nancy Penwell of Fayette County, escorted by County Commissioner Tony Anderson. Now, Nancy was nominated by the Volunteer Guardian Program, it trains volunteers to become court-appointed guardians for individuals in nursing facilities who have no family and are unable to care for themselves or make sound personal decisions. Nancy is one of the volunteer court-appointed advocates. She shows compassion and gentleness in assisting those in need, whether they come to her church for help, they live in her community, or she meets them on the mission front after a natural disaster. Caring is her hallmark. She invites and drives people to church and then makes sure they get to their appointments and always remembers their birthdays. Commissioner Anderson is here to tell us more about Ms. Penwell. Thank you so much for having us today. I appreciate uh, being able to be the commissioner today to honor Nancy Penwell for her service and dedication in, in and around Washington Courthouse and Fayette County. Nancy has told me that she never wanted to be in the spotlight. She's always there in, excuse me, always there in the background, always working with the students in school, always working with those that she was volunteering with. And I have to say for a second, the need for volunteer guardians is so dynamic in all of our communities. So I'm asking you to volunteer some more. But Nancy has taken on some difficult chores, some difficult tasks without wanting the accolades without wanting all the notice for it that goes with it. So it's, it's a pleasure for me to get to introduce to you Nancy Penwell. I just want to thank Tony and Colleen. Closer to the microphone. Okay. I just want to thank Tony and Colleen, thank my church family and my son from driving up from Kentucky for coming and <clears throat> sharing this day with me. Um, I'm honored and I'm humbled. I am really, really thankful for meeting Jane Moog. She introduced me to the Volunteer Guardian Program and it's an outstanding program and I just hope that we can get more people in Fayette County involved. Um, I really do this because I just want to serve God. And in the morning, I call home, and he usually has plenty of things for me to do. <laughs> I've learned to be flexible because usually my plan for the day doesn't coincide with his. So, I have learned to try to follow him and do what he wants me to do. And thank you for this honor, and God bless you all. If I can just add something very quickly to that, with my work through Alzheimer's, I've learned there are many people in end-stage Alzheimer's who have no one to help them. And if you are in the position to take on one of those advocacy roles, it can be very, it can be life saving for these people to have someone helping guide them through the end stages. So thank you and congratulations. Up next is Nancy Penwell of Fayette County. That's who we just did, isn't it? We're gonna move on to the next page. Next is Paul and Jean Campbell of Franklin County, escorted by County Commissioner John O'Grady. Paul and Jean were nominated by Life Care Alliance. In their 26 years of delivering Meals on Wheels, the Campbells have a reputation for going above and beyond the call of duty. Not only do they bring friendship with their meal deliveries, but they are known for helping clients with groceries and errands, and they go back and do all of that on their own time. So congratulations to Paul and Jean Campbell, and we're going to hear first from County Commissioner John O'Grady. Good afternoon, everybody. <clears throat> um, you know, I turned 50 last month, and when I got home from school, or school, <laughs> when I got home from work, my kids had got home from school before me. See how much of a child I still think I am. Um, when I got home from work that night, the kitchen was decorated with black everything, black balloons, black streamers black over the hill signs 
And my wife, uh, like many of you here, uh, many of the speakers earlier, my wife had taken the piece of mail that I got from the AARP and she pinned it up on a refrigerator. So that was my welcome home on my 50th birthday this year. To my county commissioners, friends that are here today, um, I travel, I'm in your counties many times. I was with Commissioner Merrill last week. I spent $100 at Buns, by the way. Um, uh, and I, I'm in your counties, and when I come, I generally try to spend money in your counties because we believe in sales tax. So while you're here today, all of you spend money in Franklin County. <laughs> um, unlike a lot of you, Franklin County, well, first of all, Franklin County is a county of 1.2 million people. So unlike many of my colleagues that are county commissioners that are here with us today, I have never met the Campbells until today. I hadn't met the other two uh, honorees, Mr. Stith and Mr. Siebert, until today. And so uh, I just, while I don't know them that well and I've read their bios and, and Colleen has read them to you and will read them to you, and the, uh, the work that you guys have done for the Life Care Alliance is important, especially to the county commissioners. Um, all the work that all of you do, uh, is, is critically important. We can't survive, especially in this community and in, in any community, we can't survive without the work of the agencies that you guys help out, the work of the organizations and, the, and the, the churches and the faith communities that you guys help, and they can't survive without volunteers. Volunteers are the backbone of every community. A few years ago, I was lucky enough to take a trip to India, a trade mission to India, and when we were there, uh, what the thing that my wife and I noticed the most was there was no social safety net. There weren't senior uh, organizations. There weren't organizations to help children. There weren't organizations to help folks that need help in, in, in those communities. Uh, India and in Mumbai, they have a slum that's got 800,000 people that live in the slum. You may have seen the movie Slumdog Millionaire. That slum is the size of the, city, the population of the city of Columbus. They don't have a social safety net organization or group or organizations in that community. So the work that you guys do is critical. These communities, our community wouldn't be what it is without people like the Campbells and Mr. Stith and Mr. Siebert. So thank you for all that you do. And we have uh, a resolution for you as well. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you. We thank everybody that was involved in this award. Okay, thank you. And we've really enjoyed delivering every week for 25 years the meals and helping people stay in their home. It's been a very rewarding experience, and thank you. Congratulations. Next is Floyd Siebert, also of Franklin County, who will also be joined by County Commissioner John O'Grady. Floyd was nominated by Deborah Collins to recognize his volunteer contributions at the Westerville Senior Center in helping older adults develop computer skills and to learn to use the new generation of digital cameras. I'm going to have to meet with Floyd a little later because I need help with that. On Wednesdays, you can find him sitting outside the computer lab, coaching someone on how to use the camera, surrounded by a dozen or so previous students, similarly talking shop. He is a founding member of the informal BRF Trekkers group, which sets out in search of area photography hotspots. Floyd coordinates the email list and sends notifications the night before a photo prowl, giving his patented irregular start times, such as we will meet at 837. <laughs> so Commissioner O'Grady has also a compliment or two for Mr. Siebert. Well, nobody wants to hear elected officials speak more often than an elected official, so in, in keeping with that, I will uh, uh, keep it brief. But Mr. Mr. Siebert, uh, the one thing Colleen didn't mention, the, the thing of, of great interest to me since I was a Boy Scout as a kid and my sons have been in the Boy Scouts, he started the, the, West, the Boy Scout troop uh, at, at his Westville Christian Church. So uh, established that a number of years ago. Congratulations, Mr. Siebert. Colleen, you'll have to admit you're at least 55 years old if you want help with your camera. <laughs> <laughs> well, <it's 55>. 
I wish to thank my nominators for their generous words, and I'm grateful to the Central Ohio Area Agency on Aging for selecting me for this significant honor. I admire the other honorees here today. Many of them have provided essential services such as food, medical attention, and housing for those in need. While for the most part, I have been privileged to create and lead programs that add value to life during retirement, I fully realize that the basic services must have the highest priority. But somehow, we must also find ways to help people enjoy their retirement years. Thank you. Congratulations. And Commissioner O'Grady is also going to help us welcome Fred Stith of Franklin County. Fred was nominated by Oak Leaf Village, an independent and assisted living facility. Fred's wife Kathleen reports that he started on his journey when she asked him to assist her in teaching a children's Sunday school class of 35 two-year-olds. He reluctantly agreed to that and they served in this capacity for more than two decades. Grace Brethren Church of Columbus recognized Fred and Kathleen as Educators of the Year for their excellence. Again, Commissioner O'Grady. Uh, Fred uh, volunteers on the part of town where I grew up, and, and uh, while he serves uh, breakfast for a couple of mornings, or a couple hours every morning uh, at, at Oakleaf, you also, uh, I see, help uh, learn, or first graders learn to read at, ben, at Ben's Elementary, which is where I went to school when I was a little boy. So I don't think you were there when I was there. Though. I don't think so. <laughs> Congratulations. Marvin, you're really fortunate to be able to see your friends. I have cataracts in both eyes. That'll be worked on on the 20th and June the 3rd. And so I'll be able to see my friends in the future. <laughs> <laughs> this has been a tough thing for me because I've been asking the why me. Believe me, it's a humbling experience to be numbered with this group of civil servants. Last night at midnight, as I was rewriting re and reworking my brief comments, <laughs> I think I discovered the reason. Uh, thanks to Kristen uh, Miller of Oakley Village. Kristen, are you here? Okay. Uh, Christian nominated me and to the selection uh, committee for choosing me. Oakley Village is an independent assisted living community. I give special uh, recognition to Jim Herring. Jim, are you here? Yeah. Okay. And uh, Flora Scono? Okay. And Kathleen Stepp? Kathleen? Okay, uh, for, for their involvement in the ministry, uh, for this ministry at Carwood Baptist. Are any of the residents from Oakley Village here tonight? Okay, okay. You made this possible. I started this journey 38 years ago after Kathleen and I were married. We've had many experiences serving together. In her early years, Kathy uh, worked uh, child abuse for Franklin County Children's Services. We were active in Great Brethren Church of Columbus, as Colleen has already told you, for many years, and during that time I rededicated my life to Christ. My father, LaRue, was a mechanic. He often worked all night to repair milk trucks so they could haul milk to Marysville the following day. Dad became a well-known regional gourd artist after he retired, but what he taught me was the value of hard work and keeping busy. In Sunbury, during the 1940s, it was only a quarter-mile walk from the railroad tracks to our back door. These were hard times, as many of you know. But my mother, Marjorie, <laughs> uh, 
always found food for the men riding the rails. And she was a church pianist for over 50 years. I believe my life is a patchwork of handprints. Many of you in attendance this afternoon and those who have passed on have enriched my life. You know who you are and how you have helped me become a better person. Thanks for always being patient, wise, and kind. My prayer for the 2014 Hall and Fame inductees is that before the Father closes our eyes the last time, you will hear again, you will hear again, you have run the good race. Well done, good and faithful servant. Thanks for joining our celebration today. God bless you. Congratulations, Mr. Stiff. And, and may I tell you, since your cataracts are keeping you from seeing us all today, that we all look fabulous. So you're really, <laughs> just take our word for it. We look really good. Up next is Don DeVault of Licking County, escorted by County Commissioner Dwayne Flowers. Don was nominated by Sandra Crossan in recognition of the quality of care he gave her sister and the kindness and love he showed to all the residents and staff when he was director of nursing at Echoing Hills. His door was always open and Sandra's sister Carol would wheel her wheelchair into his office to talk over her problems or concerns. One patient in particular would watch his office door just like a guard and when Don saw this woman about two years ago he reminded her of that and they really had a good laugh about that. So congratulations and Commissioner Flowers will share some remarks about Mr. Duvall. Thank you. Uh, first one. Say this is my second year here and uh, my, my two parents are 87 and 85 and I, I look at all you on the front row and some of you in the back, and it's a humbling experience. Uh, I hope my generation, and I am old enough to collect Social Security, but I hope my generation can leave the same legacy that you're leaving uh, as we all go through the time needed to volunteer for all these spatial events. Uh, Brother Don here. I've known Mr. Don DeVault for many, many years. He has sponsored me uh, into the Lions Club many, many years ago. I'm just trying to find out how he's got time to be here. <laughs> Between his chemotherapy and all the things that he do does in Licking County, it's got to be awful tough on him to be here today. Uh, and on behalf of Licking County, the uh, people of Licking County, the Licking County community, the Licking County commissioners, we do uh, thank him for all his services and all his volunteer times. We do have a certificate today for you. And uh, next Wednesday at the community breakfast, we will be doing a proclamation. Don. Thank you. Thank you. Number one, first thing I want to do is to give some thanks. First to Sandra Crossan, for my nomination to the Central Ohio, uh, Central Ohio Aging Agency uh, for the selection. And to, our, uh, to my wife, Irma, that's out in the crowd, and my children, my grandchildren, my great-grandchildren, there's like 11 of them, but they couldn't come today. Uh, and also I want to, to thank the group from the Heath Lions Club, uh, as they call themselves, the Heathens, uh, made the trip up today to celebrate with me this time. And also our host, Colleen, I'd like for you to come over here. I'm going to give you a presentation. You get a presentation from me. If you read in the bio, I've given about 75,000 Liberty Day books to the students in Ohio. And this program I hold dear because as you've been an attorney, you will realize that this book is so important to have of our Constitution and Declaration of Independence. And Thank I personalized so it for much. you. That is so kind. Thank you so much. And you should have an alpha station that is alive and well. 
Thank you. Yes. Second, all this time in the years that I've been volunteering, I've held a belief, and that belief is that volunteerism is the grassroots and the backbone of America. As you hear the inductees, and you've heard from about half of them, and I'm always impressed. When I was attending last year, uh, I was impressed that the work they do in their individual counties and the work that they do in their communities does make a difference. In closing, it brings to mind a story of the young boy. And that young boy's out on the beach and he's walking along and the tide just went out. And he's reaching down as he walks and he's picking up and he's thrown out into the sea. And a man comes running up to him and says, my son, dear boy, he says, you know, you cannot save all those starfish. And the young boy reaches up and he holds in hand. He says, yes, as he tossed in, but to this one, I can make a difference. I thank you. Thank you so much, and I do treasure this. This has some, I looked at it and already I saw some questions that I forgot from my Constitution Law class. <laughs> so I, apparently I need the primer, so thank you very much. Up next is, also from Licking County, Ronnie Vickers. Again joined by Commissioner Duane Flowers. Ronnie was nominated by the Granville Senior Center. In her volunteer role as the luncheon manager, Ronnie buys and cooks the food and makes a special dessert for an average of 70 guests at the center's monthly luncheons. She does this without hesitation and with a caring heart. Her luncheon has become the highlight of the month. The event might be the only social contact some of these seniors have with their peers all month long. Ronnie truly loves to see the members' smiles and hear their laughter. Congratulations, and again, Commissioner Flowers. Again, I want to thank uh, Ronnie from the uh, uh, County Commissioners of Licking County, the people of Licking County, for all the work that she does. Uh, I've never met Ronnie until today. I've heard her name mentioned throughout the county. And reading her bio, there's just one little paragraph that I want to read because I think it makes uh, a big deal for the future of Licking County. It says, Ronnie is a role model and inspiration to others and to her 12 granddaughters seven grandsons, 14 grandchildren. She displays a positive image of aging with her can-do attitude, and she approaches each new endeavor with energy, enthusiasm, and humor. It's good as county commissioner to know that she is mentoring to, wow, what, 30 younger people? To hopefully will be volunteering in the future. So Ronnie, thank you. to thank all the people that helped me. I keep telling the people in my kitchen that when they quit, I quit, so I hope they don't quit too soon. <laughs> but I do have super people that help me. They do try, they bend over backwards, try to do just exactly what I want. And when I serve, I serve my plates with the idea that I've made an art object because you always eat with your eyes first before you put it in your mouth. And if it looks good, they'll try it. Whether it's good or not, they'll eat it. <laughs> so I have great help. Also, I'd like to say that my volunteering has enriched my life. I've learned so many things. I've met people that I never would have met if I weren't volunteering. And it just, it's, to me, it's like, I've gone to school for free because of all the things I've learned. And I thank everybody for your nomination. Marcy at the Senior Center volunteered me to vote. I'm nominated. Nominated, thank you. <laughs> nominated me, and I really appreciate it. I never expected anything like this to ever happen to me. And I thank everybody. Thank you.
you, Ronnie. Up next, Dr. John Starr of Madison County, escorted by Madison County Health Commissioner Mary Ann Webb. John Starr, or Jack, as he prefers to be called, was nominated by the Madison County Health Partners. People reach out to Dr. Starr with physical or emotional struggles, and he never turns them away day or night. He constantly puts others before himself as the primary volunteer physician at the Madison County Free Clinic and the volunteer medical director for Loving Care Hospice. His retirement hobby is operating a small business, Star Trophy and Awards, but he also loves to cook, garden, do magic shows, travel, paint, and research genealogy. A loving father to 12 children and very many grandchildren, Jack takes the entire family on vacation on three 80-foot long houseboats every three years in Tennessee. Commissioner Webb will tell us more about Dr. Starr. For those houseboat trips. <laughs> Uh, Dr. Starr, um, actually Jack, he tells us all to call him Jack. When I saw you at McDonald's the other day, who knew we were going to be up here doing this? We didn't know that. You have dedicated your life to service. You are an inspirational example to all of us as to what the word volunteer really means. We are in the local London Rotary Club together, and um, you truly exemplify our motto, which is service above self. You give of yourself and of your time without hesitation, and Madison County is very proud of you at this moment. Um, you do it without expecting anything in return. And, and those of us who know him know how uncomfortable he is receiving this award because he doesn't like to be honored in this way. But, but please indulge us for a moment and allow us to do that. Um, if you can't already tell, I've been a long admirer of Dr. Starr's ever since I've met him. And I'm very honored to make this presentation on behalf of the Madison County officials. And we have here for you a certificate of appreciation. Thank you. I'd like to thank the Commission, the Central Ohio AAA, for this honor that they gave me. I really appreciate it. I'd like to thank Melissa Caney, my boss at the Free Clinic. She knows how much I really don't like this. <laughs> and Melissa, I just want to tell you, you're officially off my naughty list. Uh, I'd like to thank my wife, Wendy, because she collaborated in this, and she gave Melissa about 784 names of people to send letters in. And I hope they all didn't, but apparently enough did. And uh, this is an extra special day for my wife. She got her AAR or her uh, Medicare card today. And uh, Wendy, I told you we were going to do something special today. This is it. <laughs> I like to say uh, I like to thank my family and friends. A lot of them are here today. I appreciate that. Uh, I'd like to say something about volunteering. You don't wake up one morning and decide to be a volunteer. You also don't decide to be a volunteer when you retire. All these people out here have done great things and they've done it all their lives. I just thank God that he gave me the opportunity and the wherewithal to be, do what I become what I have become in my life. And this is just a way of giving back and I hope more people give back in this fashion. You guys all do, I'm preaching to the choir here. Uh, but I'd like to recite a small poem to you, short poem that uh, whenever I kind of get uncentered and think, gee, look what I did, I think of this poem and it brings me back to life. <laughs> and that goes like this. Sometimes when you're feeling important, sometimes when your ego's in bloom, sometimes when you feel like you are the most important one in the room, sometimes when you feel like you're dying will leave an unfillable hole, just follow the simple instruction and see how it humbles your soul. Take a bucket and fill it with water. Put your hand in it up to your wrist. Pull it out and the hole that remains is a measure of how you'd be missed. You can splash all you want as you enter. You can stir up the water galore. But stop and wait just a moment and it looks just the same as before. Now the moral of this story is do just the best that you can. Be proud of yourself, but remember, there's no indispensable man. And again, I'd like to thank the Central Ohio Agency for nominating me. It's a great honor. And I also thank them because they helped me fulfill an item on my bucket list. Wendy, I've had my portrait taken and it's not too bad. Thank you. <laughs> Congratulations.
Congratulations, Dr. Stern. Now we have Alice Harker of Pickaway County, escorted by Commissioner Brian Stewart. Alice was nominated by Circle of Caring, a faith in action agency whose volunteers help frail older adults and people with disabilities to remain independent and live in their own homes. In addition to volunteering with Circle of Caring, Alice works daily to support the aging members of her church and the wider community. Her willingness to drop whatever she's doing to help someone else reflects a personal ministry, whether she's driving seniors to the doctor, taking them grocery shopping, or serving people in the community kitchen. Alice listens and offers companionship. Commissioner Stewart will make further remarks about Mrs. Harker. Thank you. It's a privilege to be here again. I was honored to be here last year, and I told my fellow commissioners, I said, if you want to come in my place, we may have to arm wrestle for it because you know, the word inspiring has been thrown out a couple here uh, times here today, and, and it's true to, to see the honorees here who, truth be told, are doing more uh, for our communities in their senior years than some people will do uh, in an entire lifetime. Uh, one of the many reasons why Mrs. Harker is being honored here today is through her work with uh, Circle of Caring, and I'd be remiss to not uh, uh, acknowledge the organization itself. It's a big day uh, for Pickaway County here. Uh, before I was a commissioner, I was a councilman. And to my left uh, was, a, was a, my friend Jim. And Jim was a very active senior citizen, was involved in prison ministry. And unfortunately, shortly before I became a commissioner, Jim uh, was diagnosed with a very serious uh, disease. And this gentleman who had been extremely active almost overnight in a matter of weeks couldn't make it up and down uh, the front steps to his house. Almost immediately, Circle of Caring was there installing a ramp, uh, which I know personally meant a huge, uh, a great deal to him. You multiply that by 21 and everything else that, uh, that Alice and the rest of the group do, you, you really cannot overstate uh, how much they mean to our community. Uh, when you're a commissioner, you know, people see you out doing different things and they know that I go home at the end of the day and I've got two little girls under the age of five and they say, you know, where do you find the energy? You know, you're so busy. But when I look at the resume uh, that Mrs. Harker has put together, uh, it makes me tired. Uh, and um, one thing leaps off the page. I don't think there's any commissioner in here who could say that hunger is not a problem uh, somewhere in their county. It is in Pickway, it is everywhere. And when I read about you know, Mrs. Harker uh, coordinating 25 different churches, 5,000 meals a year, uh, you know, Commissioner Levesey alluded to it earlier. I think when we do solve hunger, it's going to be because of people uh, like Mrs. Harker. We're very proud and privileged to have her in our community, and we are very honored to pass a resolution yesterday uh, honoring her for, for her achievements. Thank you. As many of the honorees have stated, um, we all probably grew up with uh, volunteering as part of our life and it just seems like a natural continuation of that um, as you retire you just have more time to volunteer it's just a wonderful thing uh, circle of caring is a fantastic organization and they do so many diverse things in Pickaway County so it's an honor to be part of that organization and Martha Buller is our leader-in-chief and and manages to get all of us uh, doing wonderful things throughout the community. I do have a passion for hunger, and um, if uh, people are hungry, there's nothing else to talk about. And once you satisfy that, we can move on to other needs. So it's a, a real honor to uh, serve the people of Pickaway County, Circleville, uh, with our, our efforts to provide them with a nice warm meal three times a week. So. Uh, I, I'm grateful for that. Uh, it's wonderful to have such a, to be sharing um, today with all of the other recipients as well as the organization of Circle of Caring. It's just a fantastic day. Thank you. Catherine Rockenbaugh of Union County will be escorted by Commissioner Steve Stolte.
Catherine was nominated by Viola Hill for her dedication to giving back to her community. As a member of Marysville High School class of 1943, Catherine reconnects with her classmates for lunch at the Windsor Community Senior Center several times a year to celebrate one of their birthdays. At least a dozen attend each luncheon. If Catherine is not at home cooking or quilting or at Windsor volunteering, she enjoys playing dominoes, euchre, or hand and foot. Whatever that is, I do not know what that is. Are they making that up? She does that with her friends at Windsor. In fact, she's quite the competitor. She doesn't like to lose. And Commissioner Stolte has remarks about Mrs. Rockenbaugh. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much. It's a good day, isn't it? Um, it's, it's always an honor for me to be here. I've had the pleasure of doing this for four or five years, and, and I, I know, uh, looking out at, at the other county commissioners, um, we have some very unpleasant things we have to do, and there are some very pleasant things. And this is one of the most pleasant things that we have the opportunity uh, to do. And I, I'm, I'm very pleased and honored that I have the opportunity to introduce and to congratulate my friend Catherine Rockenbaugh from Union County. Catherine Katie is a lifetime resident of Union County. She was born in Broadway and moved to uh, Marysville when she was very young. Um, there's an extended bio in the, uh, in, the, in the little booklet. I would encourage you to read that. Um, just highlighting some of, some of the, the, the things that you'll find in there. Um, she's very dedicated to her church, involved in, um, in Sunday school and vacation Bible school, uh, served on the board of trustees, on the mission committee, uh, prepared food for many, many funeral dinners. Uh, she's in, been involved in, um, in, in volunteering at uh, Memorial Hospital Meals Program, exceeding 7,000 hours there. Um, and is a uh, dedicated volunteer at the Windsor Seniors Community Center. In fact, when uh, one of the other commissioners and I showed up yesterday for lunch, who was sitting right at the, uh, that, by the doorway greeting us, but, but Catherine. Um, and what I found interesting in reading the bio was 24 years ago she took a, a class in quilting at our local uh, joint vocational school. She never quilted before. She had a very uh, had a sincere interest in sewing, but had never quilted before. And since then, she's made over 100 quilts, donating those for uh, fundraising events at her church, at her uh, grandchildren's uh, school activities, and at the uh, Windsor uh, Senior Center. One of the things I remember the most is. Um, when uh, she and her husband Rocky had the Lamplighter restaurant in Marysville. And some of you may have eaten there in years past. I remember when I was a youngster uh, coming to Columbus from Wapakoneta with my parents and stopping in Marysville because you, if you're going through Marysville you had to eat lunch at the Lamplighter restaurant. So that's one of my first uh, memories of, of Catherine. You. Um, so, uh, the uh, Union County Commissioners earlier this week passed a resolution, and I'd like to just briefly highlight the, the uh, three important items there. And number one was thanking Katie for her many years and countless hours of volunteer service. Uh, also congratulating Katie on her induction into the uh, Central Ohio Area Agency on Aging Senior Citizen Hall of Fame proclaiming today, May 14th, as the Catherine Rockenbaugh Day in Union County. Thank you. So, Thank you. would you like to say a few words? This isn't Cooperstown, New York, or Canton, Ohio, but I sure am proud and happy to be inducted into the Senior Citizens Hall of Fame in Columbus, Ohio. <laughs> thank you, Vi, for nominating me, and thank all my family and friends for attending, and thank God 
then I am here to enjoy this day. Thank you. to congratulate all of the nominees. You are truly inspirational. You make a difference in your communities ongoing, day in and day out, and you do it quietly and not expecting the honor that you so richly deserve here today. But I also want to say to family members, um, my parents were also really good examples of community service. They were very active in their church and in politics and in the community and in charit charitable works. And I would give anything to have them here with us today. So please treasure your time with these very, very special people. And I'm going to turn the program back over to Cindy Farson, who will have some quick closing remarks for you. But can we have one round of applause for all of the inductees today? nice. I'm not sure we ever had a, the standing ovation at the end. That's wonderful. First, I want to thank Colleen Marshall. She really makes it a special day for everyone. I think you could tell from Mr. DeVault's presentation how special it is to have her here. So let's give her a big hand for the wonderful job that she does. Just coming out to take the ball. <laughs> So a final thank you to the staff of Columbus Recreation Parks and COAAA staff who helped with the event. And of course, thank you to all of you that have spent your day with us uh, to make this a great day for everyone. Hope to see you next year.